Coming up on DTNS, Amazon's Project Luna faces its first real test, a $700 device to keep mosquitoes away, and paper, plastic, just walk out, or drone. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, March the 1st. Happy St. David's Day 2022. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Also from Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. There's a longer version of this show containing curry called Good Day Internet. You can get that by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash DTNS. Speaking of Patreon, big thanks to our top patrons, including Philip Less, Daniel Dorado, and John Atwood. Let us begin with a few tech things you should know. FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel announced at Mobile World Congress that the U.S. will hold a 5G auction for 2.5 gigahertz mid-band spectrum in July for better coverage over long distances and also the better ability to carry lots of data. T-Mobile is reportedly very interested as it already uses a lot of the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum and could use this to expand its 5G service. Rosen Warcell is looking ahead to a 6G rollout, not going to happen for a few years, but still, we're looking at that, which she says should be handled differently than how 5G was handled. All right, just uh, marking 6G off of my bingo card for 2022. Thank you. Uh, NVIDIA announced, quote, we are aware that the threat actor took employee credentials and some NVIDIA proprietary information from our systems and has begun leaking it online. So, yes, uh, somebody did get in their systems and is leaking some of that data. The attackers told NVIDIA to pay a ransom or they will leak all the data publicly. It's not actually ransomware. They just took data and are saying, pay us or we'll leak it. NVIDIA says it became aware of the attack on February 23rd and has no evidence that this is related in any way to the war in Ukraine. Waymo received a permit from the California Public Utilities Commission to let it charge for ride-hailing trips in its autonomous vehicles in San Francisco. The California Department of Motor Vehicles granted Waymo a similar permit last September. This permit requires human safety operators on board. Uh, big thanks to the folks on our subreddit for this one. The Daily Swig's Emma Woolcott reports that Oklahoma City-based DNA Solutions determined that an unauthorized third party accessed their network and may have compromised certain sensitive information from sexual assault kits sent to them for forensic testing. That breach took place November 18th, 2021, and accessed medical information but not social security driver's license or financial information. The Oklahoma City Police Department was among DNA Solutions clients in the past, but no longer has a contract with the company. Several platforms announced new policies regarding Russia-based content. YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok will block access to RT and Sputnik in Europe, and Meta has stopped recommending Russian government-affiliated media worldwide on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram is also offering encrypted DMs in Ukraine and Russia. Netflix said it will not comply with the December law requiring it to carry 12 local TV channels in Russia. Reddit limited the subreddits that r slash Russia and r slash Russia politics from showing up in search, recommendations, or feeds unless specifically included by the user. In addition to content blocking, Binance and Coinbase will block accounts and transactions involving sanctioned individuals, but will not block entire countries. Snapchat stopped all ad sales to Russian and Belarusian companies, and Apple has paused sales of its products and pulled some Russian news apps from the App Store outside of Russia. Uh, that was just going to keep getting longer, it feels like. All right, let's uh, shift our attention to video games. Lamar, what do we got? Yeah, so Amazon opened up its Luna game streaming service to all U.S. users Tuesday. To use Luna, you pay a monthly fee for channels of games. So there's a Luna Plus channel for $5.99 a month, through uh, though th that rises to $9.99 a month starting April 1st, and a family channel for $2.99 a month that goes to $5.99 a month on April 1st as well. So if you want to subscribe uh, by March 31st, you'll get to keep the lower price as long as you keep your subscriptions active. There's also an Ubisoft channel, or Ubisoft, uh, for $17.99 a month. Ouch. So Luna just added three new channels along. So we have the Prime Gaming channel that was going to offer Amazon Prime members a free play of a rotating selection of games. Now for $4.99 a month, you can get the retro channel with games like the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Also $4.99 a month is the Jackbox Games channel, which added a Luna couch so that you can invite friends 
uh, without having them to subscribe to Lona. That sounds kind of cool. And Amazon uh, also added one click streaming feature to go live from Luna on Twitch. It streams your game from a one camera overlay. You can also use your phone as the camera as if you're playing on a Fire TV. Uh, or if you're playing on Fire TV, excuse me. And finally, Amazon now supports using your phone as a controller on the Fire TV as well. Otherwise, you'll need to use some kind of controller. So here we go. Uh, the big test for Luna, uh, it's certainly not the first game streaming service. Obviously, we have uh, GeForce Now out there. There's kind of Stadia in in some form or, or, or other. Yeah, Stadia, Stadia -ish. And, and then there's things like Shadow uh, that just recently relaunched. But but this kind of feels like the most collected and biggest name, right? And GeForce Now is 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 very collected and very robust. It just hasn't got as much mind share. I don't know why. It probably should, but it doesn't. Whereas Amazon is Amazon, right? So they're in everybody's face. They can push this out on. They can put it on the box. You know, when you get your sardines delivered, it can say like, you "Sign up for Luna right now." Uh, so I feel like this is the biggest, best test of video game streaming we've seen. They've got a decent amount of games. Certainly not every game you'd want. It's not going to replace your game console yet. Uh, but if you wanted to try it and you didn't want to buy a game console and you wanted to play some video games, there's some cool stuff in here. The one thing I'd say that I didn't figure out was how to use it with my Prime subscription. And maybe it's because I'm the mm -hmm. secondary account. Maybe I need to log in as my wife who has the main account. You know, sometimes they limit that on secondary accounts, mm -hmm. but it kept trying to make me pay for Luna Plus every time I tried to play one of the free Prime games. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to to try the Prime gaming, but uh, I'm I'm really interested. I don't know, Sarah, if you got a chance to see. I'm real interested to see exactly what's in there. What kind of games <laughs> are in there to play that are that are worth uh, you know Prime? Because you know, just like with Prime books, there's some good books, but there's some there are other books. I mean, I don't currently subscribe to any game streaming service. When I first saw the story, I was like, wow, they're really siphoning off uh, certain genres of games, like $5 here, $5 there. Well, on Ubisoft, $18 a month, which is pretty steep. But if you compare this to a video service where maybe you want a couple shows or a certain, uh, I don't know, library of certain kinds of movies, and you just don't want to pay, for, you know, seventy-five dollars per month for some sort of alternative cable uh, video streaming service. Maybe this makes sense. Uh, I, I'm sure there are people out there saying, "Well, now I have to choose, and it's going to add up if I if I uh, piggyback more than a few of these little bundles on, you know, to my entire experience." But maybe that's what people want. I mean, yeah. not all gamers play all games. Yeah, I really like the idea of the the, the channels. I I haven't ex examined it, but I I really uh, I have a friend who definitely would try the retro channel for some of those games. But uh, I love Jackbox games. It's you know, and and if all of the games are, I think there's up to seven now. If all of the games are there, and you got an event coming up, five bucks to have access to to like several of those Jackbox games for everybody you know playing your TV is a really compelling offer. So I think I think these bundles are gonna be a win, except for that. Ubisoft one. I'm not sure what what, what they're thinking <laughs> with a limited amount of games and Game Game Pass gives you 100 for 10 bucks. So I, you know, but they, there'll be somebody who will get it. I'm sure. That's for the Uber Ubisoft fan who's like, oh, I will spend more than sixty dollars a month on an Ubisoft game. All I play is Ubisoft. I don't know how many of those people there are, but yeah. if you if you were I to buy kind of. an option. <laughs> Yeah, if you were to buy even an Ubisoft game once every two months, uh, seventeen ninety nine would still beat that, right? Because it's still cheaper than than buying the actual game itself. Yeah. Um, if if you are like, this isn't for me, please you can write in, but that's not that interesting. <laughs> we hear that, we see that. That's the default operation. If you're the person who's like, no, 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 let me tell you why Luna is perfect for me. That we don't see as much, and that would be very interesting to hear from as well. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. A company called Thermacell has launched a mosquito repellent device called Live, L-I-V. Uh, you might have heard of Thermacell. They make some camping uh, mosquito repellent, but this is for your backyard. It uses metafluthrin, a synthetic molecule modeled after a repellent found naturally in chrysanthemums. 
For yard protection, you use at least three repellers. They come on these little yard stakes. You put them around your yard. Each one has about a 20-foot radius, and each one contains a cartridge with the chemical in it. When you activate them, the chemical is warmed up and creates an odorless, invisible cloud that they say is about 93% effective at keeping mosquitoes from flying into it. It doesn't even kill them. It just says they just don't want to be near that cloud. The whole thing is coordinated by a hub, which you have to plug into a power outlet, and then you connect the hub to the repeller units with these lightweight, low-voltage cables. You can then control the hub with an app over Wi-Fi, integrate it with Amazon or Google Assistant for voice control, and then turn it on manually from the app or by voice, or schedule it to go on when you need it, if you're always out in the backyard at a certain time. Company recommends turning it on about 15 to 30 minutes before you need it, and the cartridges last for about 40 hours of use. So it's not meant to be on all the time, just when you need it. It's a three-pack with a hub is meant to cover 945 square feet. That'll cost you $699. What? Uh. A four-pack, which covers 1,260 square feet, costs $799. And a five-pack, which does 1,600 square feet, is $899. Also, after your 40 hours, you're going to have to refill the cartridges. You can get a pack of six cartridges for $120. Oh, man. So, Please. I, <laughs> first of all, uh, there are areas of the world where mosquitoes are, uh, you know, they're going to carry really life-threatening diseases. This is not something that I think about on a daily basis. However... Where I, where I live is also partly an Airbnb, and in the summer, especially around dusk, mosquitoes are a real issue. This would be something that I could see certain folks uh, investing money in because it keeps people from having to slather stuff on their own person. Uh, it uh, sounds like it's it, it when when working properly, 93 percent of keeping mosquitoes away sounds pretty great, you know, when you're all sitting out on the porch eating your steaks kind of thing. But boy, is this cost prohibitive. Yeah, I, I, I have a, all, you know, I have a different view of this. I think the cost is great. I think the cost is great. If, if, if it wasn't mosquitoes, but bees. <laughs> why, why bees? You get if, chased if, by bees a lot. I, I, I do. They remember oh. me from my younger days in Chicago. They, they, wow. they have they followed me much. here to, to L.A. Yeah. Uh, they bees, say hornets. it works on. They say it may work on other small like gnats and flies, but they they they've got a submission to be able to say that for real. But they can't they can't guarantee it. So maybe it would work on bees. I don't yeah, know. I w I would pay I would pay that to keep all bees. Although if it's I, based on a <laughs> chrysanthemum powder, it might actually attract. Honestly, though, for uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. for forty hours of use, you figure okay. Well, if it was a couple hours a day, you know, when mosquitoes are the most annoying, it's gonna last. I don't know, a month, but, uh, but also having to think about it up to a half an hour before you actually need to use it. There, mm -hmm. there's definitely, there, there's, there's some legwork going on here. Even if it yeah. works as planned, it, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna change the way that you hang out outdoors. Get Paul Zander in our chat room, uh, has a personal size thermocell and says that it does give off a smell. They think, uh, but for me, it's a solution for hanging out on the patio and having a cigar with no mosquitoes. So it sounds like it works. It's just a matter of whether it's worth. For me, it's like we get mosquitoes now in the summer. It's kind of annoying. I spray myself with off and it's fine. I think I'd, I'd, I'd prefer not to have to spray myself with off, but I'm not sure if it's $700 worth of annoyance to spray yeah. myself with off. I could see several hundred bucks if it lasted the season. If you're, you know, like Sarah, you mentioned a month, but like if they were able to extend this where it's like, the summer season or the fall season, th yeah. there's some argument that those refillable cartridges are then worth it for the peace of mind of not sure. of not having that around. But 40 hours can go pretty fast if you, you know, what if you forget that it's on or whatever? Yeah. You know, I feel so. like based on what Git Pulls in or saying in the chat, that I might just want to buy one of the personal size ones and just set it next to me when I need it. Not not set up a whole system for the backyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like something you'd maybe want to want to start small, and if you're getting good results, then think about extending yeah. it, especially yeah. if you know you have a lot of guests. And and, or yeah, if you're spending like our next door neighbors, they always eat out in the backyard during the summer. This might be great for them because of that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, moving on to Uber. Uber's main app is getting some new discovery features, not in a separate app, in the main app itself. The company is rolling out a new Explore tab in the app to make things like dinner reservations, booking concert tickets, reading Yelp reviews, and getting photos and directions to feature locations from within that main app. You can pay for things from the Uber wallet and payment profile the same way that you would be you doing to book a ride. And then the app will use prior Uber and Uber Eats history to try to serve up relevant information based on your previous habits and what's popular in your given area. Uber says it's not going to charge restaurants a booking fee for reservations made through Explore, at least not now. But it may add a service or booking fee for some experiences. The company hasn't really elaborated on what that means. So sounds like a little bit in testing mode might get some money revenue to Uber in the future. The feature is now live in 15 U.S. metro areas, including Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, Memphis, Minneapolis, St. Paul, New Orleans, New Jersey, upstate New York, although not New York City, Orlando, San Antonio, San Francisco, and Seattle, also in Mexico City. Yeah. So I opened up mine here in Los Angeles and there's a ton of stuff in here. There's there's restaurants, there's the Griffith Observatory, mm-hmm. uh, there's museums, but none of them let me book a ticket. It's all just booking a ride. So I feel like they've definitely, you know, partnered with Yelp to populate this thing with lots of stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's a great way to uh, encourage you to be like, Oh, what should I do today? Oh, I, I think I'll go to this uh, escape room and, mm-hmm. and let me book, book my ride. That's all very convenient. The, the aspect of this, which is getting the most attention, which is, and I'll be able to buy the ticket to the event through there doesn't seem to be as widespread. Like they, no. they, need, they got some work to do there. Yeah, you know, and like I looked at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour Hollywood right right above the the one you mm-hmm. mentioned. Uh and I I clicked through and they still have the book right there, but lower down they have hey, uh the wbstudiotour.com. So if is that an affiliate so link that they get out. credit yeah, for? Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, but if you're trying to do like a one-stop shop type of thing like quick quick click, I got tickets, then you and cuz I think you mentioned this pre-show. If I know if I, if I get a ride there to the WB Studio Tour and they say sorry we're booked for the day, but that's you know that's kind of a wasted wasted trip. But they can tell you, hey, two tickets are available. Uh, do you want to order now? That's an excellent experience. Uh, if they if a, a little fee to me, if it's reasonable, is kind of is kind of worth that impromptu trip that you were taking anyway. Also, I just find it interesting the the selection here because I'm getting like. The Los Angeles County Museum of Art, the Broad, the Huntington, the Skirbel Cultural Center, Sun Goddess Ashley. She she does tarot readings. Oh, okay. But the, those are all <laughs> right. Sun Goddess Ashley got some pretty good placement uh, in there. Well done, um, Tom, Tom. You you and I still have to take that TMZ celebrity tour. It just has to happen. That bus. Yeah, it goes around. Yeah. Yeah. Can we book when it when it's bookable through the Uber Explore tab? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're totally there. Yeah. I mean, why do you got to go through TMZ? They've been doing those buses for like forty years. It, it it's an experience, right? Just they the got, TMZ they got more spray. dirt. They yeah. Tell you more <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I think this is smart for Uber uh, because they're making their money off delivering things right now, mostly food, but but also they're trying to get convenience store items and all of that. And that's fine. But they do want to get people back into using Uber as transportation again, uh, as people are venturing back out into the world more. And this is a great way to encourage that to be like, hey, do you want to go to a museum? You want to go to the baseball park? You know, whatever. Uh, we, We can make it easy for you to find the place and get it right. Well, folks, if you have a thought about something on the show, but you don't know our email address, we're going to fix that right now. Here it is. Listening. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Just the one dot, actually. Yeah. Don't do two dots. Alphabet's Wing announced it has reached a milestone of 200,000 commercial deliveries, mostly in the Australian capital of Canberra. Wing says its unmanned aerial vehicles make one delivery every 25 seconds on average right now. Uh, Wing just announced a partnership with the supermarket Coles. Uh, Wing already delivers KFC and Rolled and some medical products from a couple of outlets. 
Many folks think of Amazon when they think of drone deliveries, because, man, Amazon did a great job convincing you that Amazon Prime Air would be real someday. It has never launched. In fact, its most recent news I could find was that they laid people off from that department. But Amazon is focusing on driver deliveries. They'll, they'll drive your groceries over to you, uh, and they want to make the in-store experience easier. The first Just Walk Out powered Whole Foods has opened in Glover Park, uh, the Glover Park neighborhood of Washington, D.C. It's the first cashierless Whole Foods. Amazon has their Amazon Go stores that are cashierless and an Amazon Fresh store in Seattle uh, that is cashierless. But this is the first Whole Foods. The D.C. Whole Foods is 21,500 square feet. So that's about the size of the Amazon Fresh Just Walk Out store up in Bellevue, Washington. You can use Amazon's palm scanning or a QR code if you want to get in or you can choose self-service checkout. That is one interesting thing here is they'll still have self-service checkout. You don't have to do just walk out if you don't want to. The second Whole Foods that is going to have cashierless technology will open in Los Angeles later this year. So let's talk about groceries. Uh, first of all, Lamar, when this Los Angeles location opens up, will you commit to me that we will go <laughs> and try it out? Grocery date. I will commit 100% to this grocery date. It is happening. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. So we will report back, folks, once the Los <laughs> Angeles one opens, uh, what yeah. that's about. But I, we got I, all I, different I, kinds of way to get your groceries here. We got drones. You can just walk in and use your palm to scan and then not have to go through a cashier. You can have them delivered to you. What What's your pleasure? I like you know, it all. Oh, go ahead, it's, Sarah. It, it's funny. I, I have a few friends who live in Washington, D.C. I am not personally familiar with the Glover, <laughs> Glover Park neighborhood, but I asked a few uh, folks this morning, hey, you guys, you guys know where this Whole Foods is? And everyone went, yeah, yeah, we know. And I said, will you go in there and, and check this out and just let me know how the experience is? And it, it, I got one of two responses. First of, what's just walk out? never heard of this before. Sure. And, okay. and then other people saying, this has been going on in San Francisco for like five years, right? And I said, you're both right. <laughs> Not a this Whole is, Foods. This is a yes. Whole Foods though. Right. And right. it's an option. It's sort of Amazon saying, this is where we want to go. We need to figure out if the if our Whole, Whole Foods franchise that we bought some years ago, this is, you know, the public is ready for this. Some people will be, but to have it as an option, I think is really smart because I think- there are plenty of people who don't totally feel comfortable with this yet or don't really understand why this is convenient or don't believe that it's all that convenient for them. And, uh, and yeah, this is, this is a very much sort of proof of, uh, proof of technology before it starts to open up, uh, in other places, the Los Angeles store, I'll be really interested to see, uh, you know, how, how the uptick is on people saying, yeah, this is totally the future. Because if it if it does work well, I see this just, this is how grocery stores will all be in 10 years from now. Well, that's what Amazon but hopes they want to sell everybody that platform, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But if but if people are like, nah, I'm fine with, you know, I've got a, you know, a, 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 a card, you know, tap to pay, or I'm using, you know, maybe Google Pay or Apple Pay, or there are all sorts of other ways that people find uh, shopping and paying for whatever you buy a lot more convenient than it used to be in the past. So I want this to succeed because I think it sounds great. That said, I've never used just walk out technology because it's nowhere near me. Yeah, I, I've, I was interested in what you were saying about some people will be interested in this and some not. I, I guess my question, it, it might be, you know, one that just can't be answered is why would anyone be against this? Uh, and and, and it's some, a couple answers could be just comfort level. Some people like just having a cashier do it for them. Some, you know, we, we, we have people who will have lines of 10 carts uh, deep on each each line, but the self-checkout check, is empty. I've uh, seen that in huh? grocery stores. I know. They yeah. won't touch it. And so it, it, you know, it just makes me wonder, is it just a comfort level or is the convenience of saying, hey, as you walk in, you know, bam, 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 you can walk right out. You know, and and I'm, I'm guessing Tom, you're itching to say privacy as one of the, as one of the things. Privacy. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, I, cause, cause <laughs> heard of it? about self-service checkout, I, I will find myself sometimes saying, you know what? I just want to go to the cashier because the self-service checkout has its own problems and sometimes it doesn't work or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'm going to buy an alcohol and you can't do that at the self-service checkout. Sure. Uh, whereas just walk out is go always going to be easier. 
There's there's no like, uh, so the only people that would object to it are people who are like just stuck in their ways. They're like, I don't even want to think about a different thing. You mean I have to get a QR code? Forget it. I don't want to do that. Uh, or privacy, like you said. It's people you who are your freaked hand. out yeah. by being tracked, even though it's just being tracked around a store. And even though you're always tracked anyway in a store, because there's always employees looking at you to make sure you don't steal stuff. Uh that people are like, I'm not comfortable for whatever reason with with cameras following me. I would like to not uh, show up on your cameras. It's like, man, the cameras are there anyway. You might as well use them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I actually, uh, before we move on, I, I, I asked a friend who said, I'm uneasy with this. And I said, well, why exactly? Mm. Uh, you know, because if you're buying something, the cashier would know that you were buying it eventually. What about this bothers you the most? She said, well, you know, what if I pick up a bunch of stuff, you know, maybe look at nutrition labels and put them back? Aren't they now getting a lot more intel on what I'm interested in in general, not necessarily what I'm actually going forward with the purchase of? And I said, OK, that's fair. But, you know, how does this negatively impact your next trip to the store? I'm not sure it does. Yeah. But again, honestly, everybody feels differently about this. They're getting that info anyway, whether you use just walk out or not, like. That part's sure. not changing, right? You're in their store. So they're always looking at that kind of stuff. And as long as, here's the key, as long as they're not building a profile on you from that and selling it without your permission, I'm, I'm fine if they're like, man, we got a lot of pickups on the mayonnaise today. People are really into mayonnaise, order more mayonnaise. That's great. As long as it's not, ah, we know that Sarah picked up a lot of mayonnaise. So make sure to push a lot of mayonnaise stuff to her email address. And when she logs mm -hmm. into Amazon, suggest she buy lots of mayonnaise. That's that's where it just gets Well, and, and given history, I think uh, the, uh, the fear that you will only be <laughs> targeted as a mayonnaise person in the future is somewhat <laughs> warranted. Yeah, right. So if if you can convince me that you're you're not going to try to sell me Sarah Lane or Justin Robert Young mayonnaise because he hates mayonnaise, then then we're okay. Just <laughs> okay. Make sure. That Listen, I love mayonnaise. There's just only so much I can eat. Yeah, same here. Uh, scooter maker Razor, R A Z O R, not to be confused with Razor without an O, has experimented with e scooters in the past. Over the past few years, a fair amount of models. But scooter uh, maker Razor has a new model, the Razor Icon. It's an e scooter modeled after its original Model A that you might kind of think of as younger kids scooting along the sidewalk using. The Icon has a 36 volt lithium ion battery and a 30, 350 watt motor with a claimed range of 18 miles on a single charge and a top speed of 18 miles per hour, which is pretty fast if you're on a scooter, comes with an LED headlamp and brake light too, and is launching at Toy Fair in New York City today. Now, if you want to pre-order it, the pre-orders are open now on Kickstarter, of all places, for $550. The eventual price will climb up to $600. So if this is something you really want, you get 50 bucks off. Uh, and I... I'm not personally going to buy one because I've never had a Razor scooter in general, but I can see where the uh, nostalgia plus modern life would make a lot of sense, depending on where you live. Yeah, man, I'm going to jump on Alta Vista, do a search on where to find this, and tell everybody I can on AIM. <laughs> so Tom Next has made navigator. his feelings known. Yeah. <laughs> Lamar, what about you? Are you were you a, a Razor fan at, at any point? Does, I... does the idea of the 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 Model A e scooter um, titillate the Razor no, senses? Never had never had the the privilege of having a, a scooter in my younger my youngin days. So um, no, I don't even use the scooters that are around LA now. I, I you know, I think of the yeah, Razor scooter like as uh, dot com era people going down Eighth Street to the Townsend studio where Townsend offices where ZDTV and Tech TV were. Like I re definitely remember seeing people on their Razor really? scooters when they were mm. new. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. It was it, it always sort of struck me as like like a skateboard but a little safer. Mm -hmm. You can you you know, <laughs> yeah, you can I suppose cuz you got something to hold <laughs> on to. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can you, know, you have a little bit more control unless you're like a great skateboarder and then go for it. But uh, this is not something that uh, I've ever used. Uh, the e-scooter stuff, especially if you live somewhere s somewhere with maybe not uh, really dramatic hills, but hills that something like this could go up and down, just like an e-bike or, you know, variety of other e-scooters that are on the market. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, not super affordable, but not, not the most expensive option either. 
Yeah, I just want to say real quick. I'm happy to see Toy Fair back. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I used to go. I used to go yeah. for you know a couple of years. It, it's it's just it, it's in New York. It's just I'm glad glad to see you back. That's all. <laughs> Paolo DLR said scooters are inherently kickstarted. Oh, kick. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's check out the that. mailbag. Let's do it. Louis or Louis, um, either one from Montreal, said, I was listening to your vet it or forget it discussion. This was a conversation we had with Justin Robert Young last week on how we uh, read the news and try to vet sources for ourselves. Louis says, my preferred way is to keep up with the news on Google News. My favorite feature is view full coverage. It'll group articles from various news sources about a topic, giving you various viewpoints. It also aggregates relevant tweets on a topic. Not sure how many other people use Google News, but I've been using it as my primary news source since 2013 when Google Reader was discontinued. And I feel like I get a much more balanced story because it will surface sources I may not have implicitly followed, as well as the original source of a story. Yeah, I use Google News as one of the sources for uh, putting together things for, for Daily Tech News Show. My only negative on Google News is they sometimes will surface places that I don't, I'm like, I don't know if I should trust this source or not. I've never heard of this place, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because there's new things coming along and I, you, you don't want to keep them from coming. But sometimes I drill down and I'm like, no, I should definitely not trust this source that Google News uh, surface. So you got to be careful. But yeah, I agree with you. It's, it is a good place to expose yourself to things that you might not otherwise see. Yeah, I am a uh, Google I News user for sure. I am too. On a daily basis. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's kind of the same stuff I've seen elsewhere. Sometimes not. Uh, it's definitely definitely a good source to have in your mix uh, if you're a news junkie. Uh, we wanted to thank a brand new boss that we got since yesterday's show. Mikhail Soder just started backing us on Patreon. Thank you so much, Mikhail. Indeed. Thank you, Mikhail. Yes. You got a, you're a new boss right now. You're going to get a lot of attention to us. Yeah, a lot of applause. Not not unwelcome attention. A lot of thankful, like grateful attention. So standing please, out. Jump in stand there. standing O. Oh. Lamar Wilson, always good to have you back on the show as well. And so glad your power came back on before we started yeah. the show. Gotta love tech, right? Let folks know where Gotta they can keep up it. with everything else that you do. Yeah, if you go to LamarWilson.com, there's all, all of my links. I do short form vertical content everywhere from unboxings. Did a, a movie review for the first time yesterday because I saw the Batman early. So I did that in under a minute, let you know my experience uh, of being on a WB lot for the first time and uh, all kinds of things. The, the unboxings are the best one. Just pull one up today, tearing up some Funko. So you could just check me out, LamarWilson.com. It'll take you everywhere. That's Lamar with two R's. Check him out, everybody. He is prolific on the internet. We are live on this show. We like to think of ourselves as prolific as well. Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC is when we are live. Found out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back doing it all again tomorrow with Scott Johnson. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>